Hello everyone and welcome again to our YouTube channel. In this video I will be explaining about uh, Kaggle. I will show you how to use uh, Kaggle kernels for deep learning and um, how to participate in competitions. I will be mainly showing an example that we have used in the PyTorch challenge uh, in classifying 102 flowers with PyTorch. So let's get started. To get started, you first have to go to Kaggle and then click on competitions. Um, of course, I'm assuming that you already have an account or if not, please sign up or register. And then go to competitions and then um, if you already know which, uh, which competition you want, uh, you might have an idea where it uh, could be. So I already know that the competition I need is in in-class. Uh, it's called uh, 102 um, flower pytorch and you can see that it's already there because I'm already in. Uh, we, if you don't see it here, you just type 102 and you will see it uh, coming out for you. And then uh, you click on it. Usually if you are not a uh, part of it yet, you have here uh, participate in a competition or join competition and then uh, you scroll down uh, you have to read what are the requirements of course uh, if you don't want to code from scratch to get the files that they need you to submit you can use the ready kernels and that are publicly uh, shared by clicking on kernels. In this particular uh, case, they need us to um, load our PTH file where we have saved uh, the weights and the model parameters and uh, submit a CSV file that contains the labels of the uh, flowers. They have their own uh, test data and they want you to uh, label those um, data and submit a CSV file of that labeling. So I will show you how to choose one of the kernels. Uh, usually here is the name of the kernel and the accuracy that I have scored using my own model and some tags. Uh, you click on the one of the kernels of course you're free to choose the one you like. And then you say uh, fork. If you don't have this option, you can press on the three points. Usually it's there. Um, I would say fork. It will take a little bit. Um, and now we are in. Few information that you could find um, on the internet about uh, Kaggle kernels is that they have um, four CPUs, uh, 16 gigabytes RAM and uh, 1 gigabyte disk space and 60 minute execution time and that uh, they work similarly to uh, Jupyter Notebooks usually if you create your own kernel uh, the only uh, cell by default is this one because uh, here they allow you to see what you already have in your environment so if I uh, click here run you will see that you already have flower data and sample submissions CSV file. Be aware that always you have the uh, data from this, the competition you are participating in, which is something good. Uh, so you don't have to take care about that. Uh, however, you will need to load your PTH file, the checkpoint that you have saved after you have trained your model. To do that, you have to go to add data then at the add a data source, you click upload. Here you have to create a folder name. Let's say my data. And then you select a file to upload. You could select more than one file, but for now I only need the PTH file. If you are wondering how we could generate such a file, you could visit my uh, older YouTube videos. Uh, where I explain how to save checkpoints after you train your model. And now we click open and we wait till it uploads. Now it's done, you can see uh, a check mark. 
if you have made a mistake and you want to, to choose another file you could always uh, click this X it will delete the file and you could choose uh, the one you need again now we click create and you can see that it's already processing your data then it says uh, success we click close and now you can see it's refreshing by its own and we can see now my data folder we wait for a bit until the uh, environment is ready now it's ready now if I run the uh, first cell that is there by default I will see that I have two folders my data folder and Oxford uh, flower PyTorch folder in this folder you can see from the right side that it has a sample submission CSV file and the flower data zip file inside the flower data you uh, will see that we have three folders test folder train and validation folder also uh, this competition provides you with a JSON file that uh, maps the category to the name and now we are ready you just have uh, as I said, if you have forked uh, a kernel that already exists, you have already all the code you need. You just have to run it. So let's run it together. And you can see here that inside the import, again, uh, we have my data folder and the flower PyTorch folder. And inside the uh, flower PyTorch folder, we have the zip file and then again the flower data file so when I uh, click here run I will see the train the test the validation and the JSON file uh, you have to specify the uh, path that your uh, data is in so just be careful if um, your data is in a different uh, order here you will have to take care of this uh, path and change it accordingly again let's run and see if there's something wrong nothing wrong then again run the next cell here I'm just showing some pictures and we are loading here the checkpoint in this cell we only need to make some changes according to your uh, pth file where you have saved your checkpoint so please if you haven't seen the previous videos of uh, check saving checkpoints refer to that in this case here I am using ResNet 18 so I am here doing the loading as I do it for ResNet 18 um, as you um, probably know if you have watched the other videos that uh, first you have to uh, load the pre-trained model and here because I used ResNet 18 I uh, load it again and then uh, I freeze the parameters then we have to modify the last fully connected layer according to our classif uh, classification uh, task so here because we need uh, 102 classes we will be changing the output of the fully connected layer to 102 um, again, uh, please refer to the previous videos because I have already explained these parts if you are not following with me now. And then you say uh, load the state dictionary uh, because I also used um, in my checkpoint keywords. I have also here to uh, load that with keywords. So I load it with a state dictionary. Then we set the model to evaluation to the evaluation mode because we are not training anymore. We are just doing testing and return the model. Um, after you finished your load checkpoint uh, function, you just need to load the checkpoint itself. And uh, here the file will be uh, according to your PTH file. Uh, as you can see the pth file that I had here is has a different name from the one that I have on the right side so if you click on my data you will see that I call it classifier pth so we have to change this name also the path 
was input so right and then my checkpoint we, we don't have any folder here that is named my checkpoint so we have to change it also to the one we have so we have to change it to my data so we type my data and we are ready to go we run you could notice that I have uh, a problem here an error that says there is no such file or directory although that we can see uh, that inside the input we have my data and then inside my data we have the classifier pth which is basically right uh, so why do we get an error this is because it's not reading my data folder as we write it here you can check how it uh, read it from above this is why they include um, the very first cell always uh, because they see my data with capital letters as my data small letters and with a minus between the two words instead of space so we have to use the same way they write it here in our path so we copy this name and we paste it in our path so input my data with a minus and then classifier pth and now we run this up you can see that the problem is solved and we can see the last layer because I printed here as linear layer of output 102 classes we continue to uh, run the cells smoothly here we compute the accuracy then we see how this works um, I have already run it and then we map the index to a class you can see here how we do that I'm just printing it I will be explaining how we do all of this uh, in details in the other tutorial for the classifier but now I just wanted to show you how to use Kaggle and then we uh, define the prediction function and then we use it mm -hmm. and here we create the submission file and you can see that um, usually they give you only this image and you have to create its ID and that's how your submission CSV file will look like and now we are done how to proceed now that we are done we click commit and we wait you can see the log message so now we are ready and um, everything is completed we click return to editor and now you have to uh, click on these two arrows and go to your output as you can see the output file is the submission csv not sample submission uh, this file is what you have created and now we click submit to competition and we see our score as you can see uh, my pth file has scored um, 93% only because um, I have only trained it for five epochs so uh, if you train it for more epochs with ResNet 18 for the uh, 102 uh, flowers you will get much more I have uh, already trained my own and got uh, And got on this level so I was the 48 
yeah it's not that bad but uh, other people were better and they squeezed more accuracy than I did um, but I just wanted to show you um, how other users uh, would see it from their perspective um, you can see here I have scored uh, 98 of course you could always uh, score better when you uh, train more use better parameters and this way you would have uh, participated and uh, got in a position on the leaderboard hope you enjoyed it please um, like this video and subscribe and hope to see you in the next video goodbye